Are you ready to let your praises rise? Check, check. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Glad you're here to praise with us. Let's get started. Feel free to stand and see what you like.
we might be ready to go out and face the world again. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We invite the children now to go out to the village kids with uh, Travis and Dana. The other Travis, we have two Travises. I know it's confusing. Travis Williams. This is Travis Ross. You got that organized in your brain now? Travis Williams is the village kids leader. Travis Ross is the band leader. Got it now? Two Travises. It's just a coincidence. I made a joke that I only hire people named Travis, but that's not entirely true. Our office manager is Shelly, so. I didn't I find an office manager named Travis, so I hired Shelly. What was that? Her middle name was Travis. <laughs> is your middle name Travis? No. No. Travisina. Travisette? Something like that. We are the Village Church. We are a community of loving, kind people. We try to be kind, don't we? Every week when we gather, we remind ourselves of our values. We have to come together and remember who we are because it's easy to forget. And so we say our village statement every week to recommit ourselves. Would you say it with me now? We are, we are the village church. When we gather in community, we remember that God is with us. We know that we are imperfect people. We make mistakes. We give thanks that God loves us anyway. In this community, we practice patience, compassion, and forgiveness. When we leave this gathering, we go out to share God's healing love with a broken world. We are Jesus' instruments of hope in our world. We are followers of Jesus, and we can change the world. Our scripture today comes out of the Gospel of John, the first chapter, verses 35 to 42, and Karen will be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he explained, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two, the two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you standing? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him. one of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, "We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed." He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, "You are Simon, son of John." You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. Okay, before anybody gets too confused, that shirt that Rock is wearing has a green word in the middle that says people. It's supposed to say no perfect people allowed. At the village, we do not have shirts that say no people allowed. Would you stand up? Are you wearing the shirt now? It says no perfect people. We were trying to get shirts that said lime, like neon green, but we got like Kelly green. So just so you know, we would never dream of having shirts that say no people allowed. That would be really stupid, wouldn't it? So, yeah? Somebody's phone is beeping. It's charging over there. It's a watch. Something charging, something charging and it's beeping. Thank you. We live in a world of technology. We like our technology. Technology is our friend. That's what my husband keeps telling me even when it drives me crazy. <laughs> technology is my friend. Oh, sorry, they're filming me, aren't you? They're trying to, but I keep moving. Will you pray with me? God, we love you, and we know that you love us. We're here today because we 
long for your message of love. We know that we are your beloved children, but we don't always feel like it. So speak to us today. Speak to us a message of love. We're listening. Amen. Some of you got the memo today to wear the hoodies, so if you want to put them on for just a minute, we won't wear them the whole time, but put them on. If you get the memo, it's okay. I put it on my Facebook. I learned something this week. I learned something from Marion Wright Edelman. She is the leader of the Children's Defense Fund, a wonderful organization that works to support the rights of children. Marion wrote that parents who are raising black children, especially black sons in America, have a particular responsibility. They have to teach their sons something that I don't have to teach my son. Parents raising black sons at some point have to sit down with their sons, probably more than once, and have the talk. The talk about how to keep yourself safe. She said you have to teach him how to walk, what to say, and how to act so you won't seem like a threat. You see, my son Jamie enjoys privilege simply because he's white. If he's walking down the street, even in the old West End where we live, and it starts to rain, he can pull up his hoodie, and he won't seem like such a threat. But Trayvon Martin was walking through a neighborhood in Florida, visiting a relative, and he pulled up his hoodie in the rain. He was coming back from buying some Skittles and some Arizona iced tea. And a block watch captain thought he looked suspicious. He was a black teenager. Now, we don't know the whole story about Trayvon. Other things may come out, so I don't want to jump to assumptions. But we do know that he didn't have a weapon. He had Skittles and iced tea. Perhaps the man who shot him rightfully thought he had a weapon. We don't know. Something happened. And a young black teenager ended up dead because he was perceived as a threat. He was perceived as suspicious. He was walking while black. That's the name of the article written by Marion Wright Edelman. I posted it on my Facebook page and I commend it to you. She said between 2008 and 2009, 2,582 black children and teens were killed by gunfire. Now listen to this. Black children and teens are 15% of the population, but they were 45% of the children and teen killed by gunfire during that time period. Black males 15 to 19 are eight times as likely to be killed as white teens by gun homicide. Some people think that the race issue is not an issue in America anymore. I would boldly say they're wrong. Here at the village, we follow Jesus so that we can change the world, right? We follow Jesus so we can change the world. That's what it's all about. You could be doing something else today, right? What could you be doing this morning? Tell me. Sleeping. Sleeping? <laughs> Watching TV? Playing video games? Yard work? Homework. What? Moving? Homework. With problems as big as the race issue and gun violence in our country, it seems kind of hopeless to think we can change the world. I mean, look around. Look around just this room. 
There's not that many people here, maybe 50 people here today. I mean, come on. Who thinks we can change the world? <laughs> you people are crazy. <laughs> For those watching at home, they just raise their hands. The Children's Defense Fund has a piece of children's art on its website. It's kind of scrawled a crayon and it says, Dear Lord, be good to me. The sea is so wide and my boat is so small. Look at all of us. The sea is so wide. This little boat we have here. It's kind of small. But you all think we can change the world. Who have you been listening to? You. Jesus. One life at a time is how Jesus started and it's how we start. Well, last week we had a benefit concert down the street at the Village Idiot. How many people were able to drop by there? This picture is from there. We raised $400, and we collected 138 food items. Okay. We're going to do it again, maybe next fall. Travis had a great time. It was a lot of work, but he said he'd do it again. Yeah? Yay, Travis. And all the team. Food rent to a food pantry at the Lutheran Church down on Huron. I was really happy to hear that because we have a tie there. Tyanda has done a lot of work at that church. At Salem. Salem, Salem Lutheran Church. Some of you have been there. It's a great ministry. And uh, our, our money will go to help lots of the food pantries in town. And we heard Pastor Steve talk about how they will multiply that money. Hundreds of people will be fed through that $400. Well, between acts... I got up, I talked a little bit about the village. Uh, Pastor Steve talked about Feed Your Neighbor, and Rock stood up and told her story. Now, Rock doesn't like to come to bars. Rock has been clean from drug and alcohol for how many years? Fourteen and a half years after some serious addiction. You want to tell me how many years you were addicted? No, she don't want to tell. Too many. Too many years since she was quite young. Rock is not a professional speaker, that's not her job. But we twisted her arm a little bit, and she came to the Village Idiot last week and spoke. She told her story. She told her story about this church because this church means so much to her. Rock moved to Toledo a couple of years ago to help raise her grandchildren. She didn't raise her own children because her life was kind of a mess, I don't think she'll mind me saying. But she had a chance a couple of years to get another start on life and come here and help her son by being the nanny after school for her two grandchildren. And I invited her to stand up in a bar to people who came to donate money for food and say what this church means to her. When she moved here a couple of years ago, she had no idea how she was going to help raise those grandchildren because she never raised her own kids. She didn't know what she was doing. And before she found the village, she was getting really discouraged. She was depressed. And she was about ready to start looking for drugs again. And it wouldn't be too hard in this town, would it? But as she was starting to get ready to look, she found the village church. And guess what? We became her second family. This community changed her life. We showed her compassion. We kept loving her, and she tested us. She tested us. Anybody remember being tested by Rock? <laughs> but we just hung in there with her. Because that's what we do. That's what Jesus has done for every one of us. And now, a year and a half later, a year later, not only is she here, and not only is she leader, a leader of this church, and not only has she found her partner Beth, but she stood up in public and up in front of a bunch of strangers and gave a witness. saved her, God saved her, but God used this community to turn her life around and save her. And the reason she had the courage to stand up and talk to a bunch of strangers about the village is because she wants 
hope to grow through this church. She wants more people to be here because she knows there's more than 50 people who are looking for hope. Rob knows that we can grow our movement to change the world stronger. We can do more to change the world for the Trey Bonds when we can find people who need a church and who want a church like this. But they can't find us if we don't invite them. They can't find us if we don't take opportunities like she did to get out of our comfort zone and walk into a bar and tell our story. Now, how many people out there want to walk into a bar and stand up in front of a mic and tell their story? Do I have a volunteer to do it next fall? Okay, guess what? I'm not going to ask you all to do that. Everybody go, Whoosh. I didn't hear you. Whoosh. Okay, so here's a question I have for you. How many people have ever gone to a great new restaurant or seen a great movie and the next day you told somebody about it? Have you done that? Right? told a lot of people, you're like, I went to this great restaurant. You should check it out. Five Guys hot, uh, Hamburger Place, right? I shouldn't make commercials, right? Five Guys Hamburgers, right? I saw this great movie. Yeah, well, Pat and I are vegetarians. We don't like the Hamburger Place, right? If there was a great new vegetarian restaurant in town, you better believe Pat and I would be telling people about it. Right? Becca and Kurt went to see the Hunger Games on Thursday night. Everybody's talking about the Hunger Games, right? I don't really want to go see that, but I may have to take Becca the second time. Over the next two weeks, between now and Easter, I'm going to ask you all to think of five people you can give an invitation card to come to Easter Sunday at the Village. Easter Sunday. Now I know some of you have already invited everybody you know to come to the village. Raise your hand if you invited everybody you know to come to the village. And you're just waiting for them to come. And Okay, so here's the thing. If they've already shown some interest in coming but they haven't come yet, you can take them a card and remind them that Easter Sunday's coming up. Because you know what? I don't care if people only come to church on Christmas and Easter. I, I don't want you to scold people who only come to church on Christmas and Easter. Because if they come once, they might come back. Okay? If they come on Easter and then they have a crisis in their family, guess what? They're going to say, I have a church. It's the village. They're going to claim us. So don't you scold people who only come on Christmas and Easter. <coughs> they need a church, okay? And we're their church. But here's the thing. Those of you who raised your hand said you've already invited everybody you know. The average person knows 200 people. How many people have invited 200 people to church? Okay, Kurt and Becca, they think they have. They, they may have, but you know more than 200 people. You're not average, okay? But in our heads, we make this a scary thing. It's scary. I know every one of you out here thinks, oh, it's scary to invite people to church. They're going to think I'm a holy roller. Oh, or they're going to reject me. You're scared of rejection. Are you scared? Are you scared of rejection? Somebody's going to say no. Are you scared of rejection if you tell somebody at a great restaurant and they say, I don't like hamburgers? Is that scary? No. We're not afraid of telling somebody, I love the Hunger Games, you should go see it, right? And they say, yeah, I kind of want to go see that. That's not scary, right? So why does just telling somebody about church, why is that so scary? I know it is. I know it is. You don't have to convince me, but let's just, you know, just chill out. Just chill out, right? Just Let's just try to not make it so scary. You would be surprised at how many people are just waiting for an invitation. So let's look at today's scripture. In today's scripture, Jesus is just beginning his ministry, all right? He has just met John the Baptist. John has baptized him. And some of John's disciples come across Jesus. Now they can sense that there's something special about Jesus. There's something special about the village, right? We sense that. These disciples, they're curious. They want to know more about Jesus. They just ask him where he's staying. That's all they ask. And he says, come and see. That's all he says. Come and see. Guess what they do? They go spend the day with him. And by the end of the day, one of them says, this is the Messiah. They're hooked. How many of you, I know I'm making you raise your hand a lot today. You can just nod this time. How many of you, the first time you walked into the village, you got hooked? Something just, the people, 
the, the kind of unpretentious kind of way, just the feel, you know? I try to explain it to people. I try to ask you to explain it to me, and you say, I don't know, but I just came, and something felt like I wanted to come back. This community just embraced me, and I felt like I, I needed to come here because when I miss a Sunday, something doesn't feel right. This community reminds me of God's accepting love. These people spent a day with Jesus, and they called him the Messiah. They knew a good thing when they found it. But here's the thing. When they say to Jesus, where do you live? He doesn't sit down and say to them, okay, here's the, here's the 14 things you have to agree to in, in order to be my follower, right? He doesn't say, well, at our church, you know, you have to believe in the virgin birth, and you have to believe this, and you have to come every Sunday, and you have to give 10% of your money before you can come, right? He, doesn't, he just says, come on over and see what's going on, right? He doesn't talk theology. He doesn't ask them, are you divorced? Right? Do you smoke? Right? Do you have any tattoos? <coughs> right? He doesn't ask any of that, right? He just says, oh, why don't you just come hang out for a while, right? It's a great model for us. We can say to anybody, why don't, why don't you come see this new church? We meet at a movie theater. Now, some people think we're meeting in that big theater up front. So I always say, have you ever been to the Mommy Indoor? There's a small theater in the back. We have some tables and chairs. We have a little kitchen there so we can serve coffee. Uh, we usually have snacks. On Easter, you can tell them we're going to have extra food. We're going to have special food. Alan's got a spread. He's planning on a spread. Right? Yeah. Yay. Yeah. You can say, you know, I, I just I like this place. They become my second family. We do service in the community. You might throw in there, we're changing the world. We're changing the world. We're doing something important. Whatever two or three sentences you say will be enough. They may ask you more information. They may not. You know what? They're either going to be ready or they're not. But if they're ready, they're going to catch the energy in your voice, right? You might remember somebody who invited you here. You saw some spark in their voice. You know, and what have they got to lose? They're going to come once. They're going to give an hour, hour and a half of their time. In exchange, they have the possibility of finding a community that might give them some meaning. It might be better than doing yard work on Sunday morning. It might be watching another hour of TV. I, for one, could give an hour of TV up for this. You, you guys are better than TV. Mm. Sounds like a good offer to me. But they won't know about the offer if we don't give it to them. Now, we can spend a little money to put some ads in the paper. They're kind of expensive, and they're not really very effective. We'll, we'll do that, because it'll kind of It'll kind of give water to what you do because they'll say, you know, I think I've heard of the Village Church. I saw a big sign on the fence out on the, the Anthony Wayne Trail. I've seen your logo somewhere. And, and we're going to ask you to help put some door hangers in the neighborhood here because that will help. Some people will see the door hangers. But by far, by far, the most effective way of getting people to check out our church is if somebody they know invites them. Even better is if you offer to bring them. You know what? I'll come by your house and pick you up. I'll give you a ride. And afterwards, let's go grab a cup of coffee. Let's go have brunch. Let's go to wherever. Let's, let's grab a bite to eat. That is by far the most effective way to get them to come. Because you know what? People want friendship. They want community. We all do. But, you know, maybe 0, 0.1% of the world, the world they, they're really hermits. Most of us, we want friends. Don't let anybody tell you they don't. So let me tell you a personal story of how it works. I've been going down to George X Coffee House right down the street here a couple times a week. Travis and I meet there to play music. I'm hanging out. I'm being present because I'm trying to mix with people. I talk to the baristas down there. And the reason we're having these events, we call come and see events, is to make it easy for you to invite people. So I go down there with these flyers. I invite the baristas. My church is having Blues Christmas down at the Mommy Indoor Theater. Here's an invitation. My church is having Greece. We're showing Greece. I'm going to dress up like Sandy. You should come. Here's an invitation. They kept saying, yeah, maybe we'll come. I'm not, you know, they don't come, right? Um, we're having music at the Village Idiot. We're going to raise money to feed hungry people. Oh, that's nice. Your church is doing that. That's a really nice thing for a church to do. More churches should do that. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Maybe we'll come. They didn't come, right? So this week, finally, Alex, one of the young women who waits on me all the time, said, you know what? What time does your church meet? 
I think I'm going to come to your church. I ran over to my table and I got one of these cards, right? I had one of these cards in my purse. I said, wait a minute. Here, Easter Sunday, 1030. She said, I think I'm going to come this Sunday. I said, great. So the next day I went back and said, Alex, I said, I've been inviting you all this time. What made you find Because I'm preaching Sunday about inviting people to church. Would you mind telling me why you finally decided to come to church? And she said, well... I used to go to church and something bad happened to me, at, you know, connected to somebody at church and so I had a bad experience. I went to that church because my mom was sick and it really helped me a lot, but then this bad thing happened that was four years ago. But now my mom's sick again, you know, and I remember what it meant to me to go to this community and I, you know, I really need another church and you've been coming in here and, you know, I don't really know you that well, but I like you and you have a church and so I'm going to come. And I said, now, are you really going to come? Because it's really going to screw up my sermon Sunday. <laughs> if I tell them that you're coming, and then you don't show up. And can I talk about you? She said, sure. She said, I'm going to come. Well, Alex is not here. But she texted me last night. And she said, Sherry, my grandma fell. She broke her hip. We're in the emergency room with her. So I'm not going to be there tomorrow. But I wanted to text you to let you know why I'm not going to be there. But I will be there next week. And I said, Alex, we will pray for your grandma. And I will see you at the coffee house this week. Now, I was a little worried about putting her on the spot because I'm going to keep her at the coffee house and I don't want her to be embarrassed if she doesn't come to church because, you know, then it gets all icky and everything. But I think Alex is going to come because she, she really, she's 22. She quit, or maybe, she's maybe only 20. She quit one when she was 16, but church meant a lot to her. But she had a bad experience. But she, I think she's going to come. She really wants to come. She's going to check it out anyway. Alex was just waiting for somebody to ask her. She's not my best friend. She doesn't even know me. She does not know me. All she knows is that I stand at the counter a couple of mornings a week, and I say, how's it going today, Alex? She says, I'm tired. I was up late. Or she says, I'm good today. How are you? I've got a cold. She does not know me. She doesn't know me. She knows I'm a friendly person who comes to her coffee house, and the Travis and I sit there a lot. And, and she didn't, she didn't, she knew he was the band leader. She didn't even know I was the pastor. She thought I was just some crazy woman who kept nagging her to come to the church. <laughs> but the time was right. She needed a church. She needs a church. And somebody just had the guts to say, here's a card. Why, why don't you come to my church? Alex wants the world to change, too. I learned a little bit more about Alex talking to her. I got her hooked up with some other people I know who were doing some other things to change the world. She wants to change the world. She wants to make a difference. I have a feeling she's going to like it here. I know you've invited some people to church. I know you have friends who already go to church or have already told you they're not coming. There's probably 200 people that you see every week. Somebody probably is right, right to come to the village, but you just don't know who they are. God hasn't showed them to you yet. I'm going to invite the band to come up here and sing a song now. While they're singing, I want you to think about who might you invite. I'm going to invite us all to invite five people to Easter Sunday. Think about who you can invite to come and watch Hope grow with us.
deciding what five people you're going to invite and take five cards. I'm going to invite you to have a little accountability by talking to somebody at your table or near you and telling them what five people you're going to invite and actually making your list. There are plenty of cards on the back tables and I have a stack here for the people that are sitting in the rows up front and if we run out you can get them off the tables. So have a little fun, help each other out if anybody's having trouble thinking of the five people. Becca was just going to stuff them in all the lockers at TSA, but we only have 500 cards, so I'm not going to make you do that. But uh, we, I hope we actually run out of cards today. So take a little time. Don't, don't fret about this. I don't want this to be painful. I want it to be joyful. So uh, think of who you're going to invite. And uh, if we have anybody who has an inspiring story for the rest of us when we're done here, we'll uh, let a couple people share. If, if you've got an inside of an idea, that's a good way to think of something. Will somebody help me pass these out to people up front? And if you need to write down a prayer concern and haven't done that, you have a minute or two to do that. Make sure the bank gets it too. <laughs> well, I'm already out. You're already out? Well, there's yeah. extra on the table. The table's have more. Tanner's giving me the thumbs up. Yes, does that mean you got your five people? Hmm? You got more? Excellent. Tanner and Trevor and their two moms live in Waterville. Waterville is fertile ground for us now that we're in Mom Me. Anybody got a story to share or an idea to share? Did you get any good ideas? Just stand up and tell us if you did. Any good ideas that might give encouragement to other people? Have you invited anybody and it went well? Nobody's bashful. Nobody has any stories to share. That's okay. Yes, Karen? Uh, I'm trying to think of how did I really invite her? Yeah. <coughs> I, have a, I, I email a gratitude list to a number of people and I put the village on there, my church or the village church or something. It's all good. It all works. So she put it on her face on a, on a gratitude list that she was coming to church and people were so surprised that there was a church you would come that they came to check it out and they're coming to church here. So there you go. Yeah. A lot of people post that they came to something at the village and they liked it. I see that on your Facebook and that's a way to do it. Sure, Kurt? I, I've got a real easy one. I'm going to do it right now. Get out your phone if you've got it and if you've got a Facebook app on there and check in. At the village, people know you're here. And by the way, the more check-ins we get, the more visible face on uh, Facebook the village becomes. So, so you can check in. Just so you have us listed at the village at mommy at the mommy theater. The village so. church. If you're sitting here and your location can find you, you just type start typing village or the village. It'll pop up. You can just check in here on Sunday morning. So we'll have check-ins. While I talk, I just did. Just like you check in anywhere else. And if Kurt's just speaking Greek to you, but you have Facebook, he can teach you how to do it after church. <laughs> Russell's walking over to get a lesson. So Kurt is the social media guru of the village. One of them, anyway. Max, have you checked in? Max knows how to do it, too. Wave your hand, Max. Max is running tech for the first time today. Go, Max. Go, Max. That's a great segue to the prayer concerns, unless somebody else has something else. One of our new phrases around here is many hands. We want to have many hands helping with our ministry here. I told a story in the email this week about a church that was going to build a habitat house, and they had 12 people on their team. And you can build a habitat house with only 12 people. But the leader of their team said, you know what? I want more people, many hands, to touch this house. And so those 12 people talked to friends about helping build a habitat house. So that, one, so the 12 people wouldn't get burned out, but also so that more people could have the joy of building a house for others. And by the end of their project, they had 120 sets of hands, many hands, building the house. And so more people got to share in that wonderful ministry. And so 
one of our phrases around here now is many hands and everybody who's leading a ministry we're encouraging folks to think about how can we get many more hands involved in the ministry one so that our leaders don't get burned out and two so that many more people can share the ministry of the village so we have several people now that we've moved to this new site that are looking for many more hands who can help with their ministry todd is looking for people with a smiling face who like to be greeters on Sunday morning, who will just stand at one of the doors and welcome people, but also look for new people and give them one of the wonderful gift bags uh, that Jody has been creating that have s'more kits inside of them. I think that's gotta be the best gift bag in town. Um, Terry is looking for many hands who will come and set up on Sunday mornings and put all the pretty things on the tables and set up the, uh, um, Welcome center with the little items. You know, this doesn't just happen overnight because it's a movie theater on Saturday night. So Sunday morning we have to do quite a few things, but it really only takes about 45 minutes to set up. So if one Sunday a month, you and your friend or your kids would come about 45 minutes early or actually about nine o'clock, maybe an hour and a half early. <laughs> I don't want to fit to set things up. That would be awesome. You could also just stay late and take down. Uh, we need many hands to help do that kind of thing. Shelly needs people uh, to bring food. The food that we uh, bring will actually reimburse you for it. You don't have to pay for it. We just need somebody to go to the store and pick up bagels or donuts. We need many hands to help with that. And Terry needs uh, people to help collect the offering. Uh, yes, and uh, we feed the hungry today. Oh, and um, there's a project to help feed the hungry at Collingwood Presbyterian Church in the Old West End. Is that right? Is that today? Yeah, so if you want information about that, you can talk to me or to Terry afterwards. So um, let us know uh, if you want to know more information about any of those ways. We like to have as many people involved in the ministry uh, so that we can grow and continue to grow hope. So let me offer these prayer concerns that were shared by the congregation. Shelley asks for prayers for her mom and friend Alice and her stepmother Judy for healing and comfort. Beth asks for prayers for her sister Celia, who's fighting colon cancer, and for her brother Les, who has health issues, and for Rock, who uh, has health issues. And then Rock asks for prayers for Beth, who's having surgery tomorrow. And Karen asks for prayers for her friend Michelle, who has uh, is dealing with lupus. Patrick Garvin asks for us to continue to pray for his partner Jim Milton and thanks that his biopsy came back negative. That's great news. And Russell wants us to remember that our friend Edie Recker uh, has traveled to Pennsylvania and Edie is having her gender confirmation surgery tomorrow, which is big, a big deal. She has been waiting a couple of years for that and preparing for that. And there'll be updates on Edie's Facebook page and we'll also put those on the Village Facebook page. So we want to pray for our friend Edie. Um, and of course, as I mentioned in the sermon, um, we want to pray for uh, the family of Trayvon in Florida and for many people across this country <coughs> who are affected um, by gun violence and by um, all the situations that are connected to that. Can you pray with me now. God, we know that you love us and you love all your children. We have named many situations that are dear to our hearts, and God, we simply ask you to offer your healing and your mercy and your comfort to your people. We pray, O oh God, that you might give your care to people who are dealing with health issues, keep in your care those who are facing surgery, give your wisdom and your strength and your steady hand to surgeons and to all those who are caring for those we know and love. God, we pray for our country. Many eyes are on a tiny town in Florida where one situation has brought the world's attention to the continued struggles we have with people dealing with people. God, we pray that we might continue to deal with stigmas, with stereotypes, with perceptions. We pray that we might continue to deal with violence and find better ways to 
deal with our problems, God, we pray for an end to the violence that continues to result in children losing their lives. God, we want to make a difference. We want to change the world. We pray that you would use us as followers of Jesus to change the world. God, give us courage. Give us strength to be your followers, to change the world. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Kristen's going to come up and make some announcements, and I think Kurt needs to help her out. Holy Week is upon us, and as you can see from the uh, program, um, we are going to be partnering with Park Congregational United Church of Christ down on Harvard um, for the different events during Holy Week. On Monday, Thursday, April 5th, we'll have a communion service. That'll be led by Park Church. Um, but the Good Friday service on October 6th will be led by the Village, and we'll also be joined by the Covenant Players Drama Ministry, so that ought to be pretty exciting. Uh, the Thursday service is at 7, the Friday service is at 6.30. So make sure you have your program with you so you can keep those times uh, straight. Um, Easter Sunday is going to be our grand opening here at the Mommy Indoor. This has just been practice worship. We're getting really good now. Okay, that's going to be for real worship. I mean, God is going to be in the house. So you don't want to miss that. Um, speaking of Easter Sunday, you might have noticed the little addendum to the program, um, stapled to the back of the program, was an order form for uh, some Easter Sunday flowers. Um, who should the order forms go back to? Is that Shelly? I kind of thought it would be you, Shelly. So give your order forms back to Shelly when you've got those filled out. Um, attach a check or, or cash also spends well, so uh, either one of those would be fine. Um, and then Mother's Day brunch. I know it's little bit off in the distance, May 13th. Oh, <laughs> have so long already. It says right here that the, the um, reservations will be open soon. I have so, to a few people. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so although reservations will be open soon, you might want to talk to Patrick if you really want to get in, you know, before the crowd. Okay. And uh, further information you can get from Patrick on that event. Uh, we are going to be uh, helping out Mommy Domestic Court so that we can provide a Mother's Day gift to those who have been affected by violence. Now, Kurt would like to make a special announcement. So Kristen, what are you doing for about half an hour or so right after church today? Well, I was going to have a meeting, this lead team meeting today. Well, we could put that off for a little bit, and you know, I'm sorry, by the way, about for you and the Gators I know, I and the Spartans, that up. Okay, whatever. And I'm praying for all that we lost on the tournament and all, but here's the deal. Um, I've got 50 door hangers right here. Oh, 50 is easy. If you walk out the door and go down William Street here, mm -hmm. when you hit when you hit about 20 minutes that way, turn around, come back at the other side of the street. You will have invited oh 200 or so people. Thank you. Now I'm a science teacher, not a math teacher. <laughs> you said a half hour, and I'm thinking 20 minutes out is going to take me at least 20 minutes back unless I double time it. That's 40 minutes. That's not a half hour. Okay, I fibbed a little bit. How about uh, 20 minutes out, 20 minutes back, or 15 minutes out, 15 minutes back? I could probably handle 15, 15. How do you get 200 people with 50 doors? That's what I want to know. About four a house. Good question. Thank you. Yeah, there's about four people in the average house in America. And we're trying to get, I haven't told the pastor this, we, we got 2,000 of those. That's about 8,000 people. That gets us closer to what we really want to have here on Easter. But. <laughs> Okay, let's go back to pastors. Yeah, we're over time here. The quick version. This is not going to get that many people. Okay, sorry. What's going to get you lots of people? Those little cards on your table. Okay, but we need people that don't know us. This is going to help people know us. They're little tiny door hangers. Hold this for a second. All you do, you don't have to be a people person even. All you do is you walk out the door. By the way, if they got a sign that says no solicitors, be respectful, just walk away. It's okay, they don't want one of these. If somebody tells you, I don't want one of those. Okay, thank you very much, sorry to disturb your Sunday. But you do this, be a door handle, and walk away. That's it, you're not intruding, you're not evangelizing, nothing scary, a little walk with a purpose. So, come see me afterwards. We got lots of these bags, you can just go, I'll give you a street. 15 minutes out, 15 minutes back. Better math teacher? Yeah. All right.
Thank you. This is the time in our service when we give back from all the many blessings that God has bestowed upon us. When the baskets go by, if you would just reach out and touch the basket, just to ask